Many thanks for joining us. Let's begin the bulletin here. And there's strong push by the majority in Parliament for the House to be recalled after the Speaker agendas. The minority's Parliament is demanding an emergency recall of the House. This comes days after the Speaker of Parliament had adjourned proceedings indefinitely. Majority Leader Alexander Penyomarking has written to the Speaker, triggering the relevant constitutional provisions in support of the recall. I was in the chamber. I called for uh, motion 23, which had to do with the 250 million uh, facility from the World Bank. And I signaled my colleague, Dr. Arthur Forsen, to meet with me so that we we'll discuss the nominees, the Supreme Court nominees. Because you have, as you may be well aware, earlier, uh, the minority chief will have raised some issues regarding. The, the vetting process. And I didn't want a situation where there was going to be a repeated banter. It was when we were in that discussion, the major, minority leader, my good self, my deputy, and some committee members were in that discussion on the sixth floor in the deputy majority whip's office when monitoring proceedings on the telly. We, we sadly realized that Mr. Speaker was about uh, a genuine city. Surprisingly, he did not give his closing remarks, neither did he allow leaders to even make certain remarks, which have become, these have become part of the practice of parliament. And uh, these are worrying. Very worried. Now, notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker is the, the the father of Parliament. He presides. We don't want to go into any banter with him. We will not act in a manner disrespectful of the chair, except to say that we vehemently disagree with the unilateral decision to adjourn the House in What is our next step? We are with immediate effect going to engage our caucus with the sole aim at getting the necessary consent of members to procure their signatories to recall the house in accordance with law. So expect to see a recall request from us. Now, sponsors of the anti-LGBTQ bill have announced plans to demonstrate against the Chief Justice on August 21 over what they perceive as delays in the process of transmitting the bill to the President. The lead sponsor of the bill, Samuel Nate George, along with some minority members, paid a catchy call on the National Chief Imam and the Acting President of the USU Traditional Council ahead of the demonstration to ensure the bill is forwarded to the president for his assent. When parliament passed the bill, it ought to go to the president for his approval. Since 28th of February, it's been one story after another. Now what we hear is that there's a court case. We said, okay, fine. Let's wait for the courts to rule on the case. The courts fixed 17th of July, 17th of July for the case, the injunction against parliament. On the 17th of July, when we went to court, the Chief Justice now says that she's pushed the case towards the end of the year, and she wants to hear the whole case, which can even go into next year, before she even rules on the injunction. Meaning that, till that is done, we can't have any headway with this uh, bill that is law. As children of God, and as Ghanaians, we know it is against our religion, it's against our culture. We want to do a peaceful march on the 21st of August, to the Chief Justice. Because right now it's not the President that's holding it. It is the Chief Justice. She is the one who is preventing Parliament from sending it to the President. So we don't have a problem with the President. We don't have a problem with the Speaker. 
our problem is with the Chief Justice. The Electoral Commission Small up Registration Exercise will run from today, Thursday, August 1 to Saturday, August 3, as part of preparations for the December 7 general elections. Deputy Chairman in charge of operations, Samuel Tete, charged political parties to educate their agents on the operations of the Commission to prevent any anomalies which for the three days event. This mop-up registration exercise will be conducted online. So if you are already a registered voter, our system will flag you out. The mop-up voter registration exercise will take place from Thursday, 1st August, to Saturday, 3rd August, 2024. The exercise will take place at all the 268 district offices of the Commission, 26 public universities, and 41 prison centers across the country. The requirements for voter registration, as stated in Regulation 2 of CI 126, as amended, apply to the mop up voter registration exercise. An eligible applicant must present a Ghana card or the Ghana passport as proof of eligibility at the registration center. Political parties are allowed to send their agents to the registration centers to observe the exercise. And the running mate to the NDC's flag bearer, John Mam, has hinted that the party's flagship Women's Development Bank will have an initial seed capital from the next NDC administration, activating a door-to-door -door campaign to win majority votes in the central region. Professor Nana Jenupokwajuman is charging women in Dunkwa of the Upper Dinka East constituency to turn up Indian numbers and rally support for NDC victory in December. With active campaign fully ignited, the running mate of the NDC's flag bearer, John Mahama, has begun a community engagement, but most importantly, she is beginning to do a door-to-door -door campaign, soliciting the votes and making a point as to why Ghana needs the NDC and John Dramani Mahama. One of the focal points is the establishment of the Women's Bank one thing she has been championing and John Mahama has put her directly in charge to ensure that once they are able to secure the mandate of the people, well, that will be fully implemented. So it gives some sort of leverage to the women and the vulnerable. <laughs> But what do the people themselves make of the running mate to the NDC, Professor Jenano Pukwajiman? <laughs>
Well, whilst this community engagement and the door to door campaign become a part of what she intends to do to solicit the votes of the people, well, she will be spending some four days in the central region, after which they will regroup and go to other regions. Kamala Future, TV3 News, Dumpa. So, Professor Jinano Pokwajiman, then that interaction with the people of Dunkwa, promising them that their seat capital almost available for the NDC's promise of establishing a women's bank. Well, we'll see how that pans out subsequently. Still with politics, though, let's go to the quarters of the PNC because former national chairman of the People's National Convention, Bernard Mona, has officially declared his intent to contest for the flag bearership race of his party. He made the announcement at the party's campaign office in Accra where he accused successive governments of bad leadership. Ghana's political landscape has been dominated by the NPP and the NDC, alternating power since 1992. The duopoly has marginalized smaller parties, leading to a decline in the electoral performance with independent candidates and minor parties garnering only 1.3% of votes in the 2020 elections. Speaking at his candidacy launch, Bernard Mona said even though the party's fortunes have been declining, he is optimistic of changing the narrative. The message of the PNC has been a solid one. The only thing that has been lacking is the messenger. We have not been able to spread a messenger that the people of Ghana can rhyme with. You have a messenger that has swag, a messenger that understands what's up, a messenger that is a guy with respect to the issues that confront the people of Ghana. That messenger is Bernard Ambata Elmona. According to him, since the Nkroma and Liman-led administration, the country has not experienced good leadership. He said he is willing to create the change Ghanaians are calling for. Our languages of origin will be used as languages of instruction in our schools, so that when you go to the market area, we will begin to have confidence that our languages are not inferior to the Englishman's language to the Frenchman's language and this is the reason why we want to run so we'll ensure food sufficiency we will reclaim the industries of our nation and ensure that we are able to mobilize our nation for greater good the PNC flag bearer race is expected to be between Bernard Mona the former flag bearer David Apasara and Samson Asakia Wingobit who are yet to officially declare their intent December 7 is some few months away. Trust us, your election command center to bring you all the relevant information that you need for the upcoming elections. Away from election, the overlord of the more traditional area is up in arms against the chief of Nkranza following attempts by the latter to claim ownership over the Kintampoya markets and the waterfall all situated on moorland. The chief of Nkranza, Nana Kwame Bafopim, who laid claim to the two strategic landmarks in the area, says since 1924, the then British government allocated 80% of the lands to the Mo people. However, in setting the record straight, the overlord of the Mo traditional area, Nana Kwakudankwa III, rebutted the false claims on grounds that the chief of Nkranza has lost track of the history of Mo and how the Nkranza people came to settle on their lands. The claim by Nana Nkranza Mahene that the Kintampo Yam Market and Waterfalls belongs to Nkranza too. is palpable false. It must also be placed on record again that the Omahene of Nkranza traditional area did not attend the function for the commencement of work on the new market, although he was invited. He failed to attend the function because he was aware the land on which the market was going to be located did not fall under his two lands. The fact is, when it became necessary to construct a new market, the two paramount chiefs were consulted to offer lands for selection by the assembly for the construction of the new market. 
Yo! Then Kranza Mahene at the time wanted the land market to be constructed on his land. Offered to him land at Animal House Boundary along the Ntankru Road. The Omahene of Mo traditional area also offered the land where the current market is located. The district assembly accepted the site offered by Omahene of Mo traditional area because it is strategic location of laying along Kumasi Tamale Highway. Deputy Finance Minister and MP for Inshaeso, Dr. Stephen Amwa, has assured to make a statement in Parliament to push for a bill which would make entrepreneurship a compulsory subject for senior high schools. The move, according to him, will guide the youth to establish their own businesses aligned with their learning experiences after school to help reduce unemployment in the country. The Deputy Minister was speaking at the third edition of the Financial Economics Seminar in Accra, organized by Financial Economic Institute Africa. He underscored the need for colleague MPs to support the agenda since entrepreneurship education encourages creativity, innovation and has the tendency of reducing unemployment among the youth. As a member of parliament, um, God willing, I'm going to make a statement on that and see if I can get the needed support to push a bill to make that law, if that is necessary, or if we don't even need a law, an education ministry can push for that. I'll be very glad because that has been my, my dream, that one day this country will really make entrepreneurship one of its official, and then, I mean, at the SHS level, in my opinion, it has to be compulsory for all of them, all of them. And then when it comes to the tertiary level, university, polytechnic, even nursing. Meanwhile, statistics and biostatistics experts at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Atinuki Adibanji, urged government to make economics condition more conducive for young people in order to limit the rate at which they are leaving the country. That's what we've told them technically. There are no jobs, so don't bother coming to look for vacancy. Create your own jobs. And on the other hand, we're shouting at them, we want you to be entrepreneurs. We want you to be entrepreneurs. We're, we're, we're canvassing for this. And Madam rightly said, it's a driver for economic growth. But in our space, if you look at these situations and this study, it shows that we're asking them to run a sprint, but we have shackled their feet at the same time with the weight. Because if the system and the space is not conducive for what you're asking them to do, they cannot thrive. The seminar is on the theme entrepreneurship, a functional element for economic growth and stability of developing economies. The General Secretary of the Socialist Movement of Ghana, Kwesi Pratt Jr., says Ghana has been plunged into economic crisis due to excessive borrowing by current leadership. He contends Ghana's political system has failed to deliver economic and social change, breeding over apathy. Must punish officials put personal interest ahead of public interest and retrieve stolen funds. We must sanction lenders who have colluded in imposing illegitimate debts on the state. We must establish effective mechanisms to ensure the Ministry of Finance and other ministries, departments, and agencies comply with the rules. Kwesi Pratt Jr. said, Ghana is in a debt slavery because the country's economy is controlled by foreign businesses. All of us know that we are not in charge of our economy. It's clear. If you follow the 17 times that we've gone to the International Monetary Fund, you know that conditions are imposed. They include, for example, the unbridled privatization of state enterprises. They have included massive devaluation of the national currency. They have included retrenchment of labor and freezes on employment into the public sector and so on. But Speaking on the recent passage of the Affirmative Action Bill in Parliament, he said gender equality is non-negotiable. Simple common sense and mathematics tell you that the majority of people in our community are women. And therefore, if we discriminate against them to the extent that they cannot participate in the national development process, you do substantial damage to the national development effort. We have 
to take positions, develop laws, and enforce them to ensure that gender equality is fully achieved. Well, that's it for our package for this morning's news on New Day. My name is Grace Hamwa. Ajima New Day continues with Na and the rest of the team. Good morning.